I know we're all excited about the new mid-engine vet coming out soon, but come on, nothing beats this. Hey. Today I'm standing next to an iconic American muscle car, the 1959 Chevrolet Corvette, also known as the C1. This, in my opinion, is easily the best looking vet ever produced. Chrome was big during this era, and I must say that Chevy used just the right amount. The 59 is distinguishable by the smooth hood, the few less pieces of chrome trim around the body, and the four headlight design which was introduced in 1958. The white wall tires blend in perfectly with the white sculpted side scoops, and while this isn't a factory color combination of the time, boy does it stand out beautifully. The owner has one heck of an eye for style, and oh yeah, he drives it all the time. And here's a fun fact. The vet holds the title for the longest running continuously produced passenger car. The Corvette was released in 1953 and offered in only one color combination, white with red interior. There were also no door handles on the outside, but that wasn't a problem since it didn't come with windows either, just plastic curtains. Initially, Chevrolet had produced only 300 and to help drive up demand, they tried to market it primarily to VIP customers. That method didn't work too well and sales suffered. Because of that, the idea was nearly scrapped. I even read that the first few vets didn't exactly roll off of the assembly line, but rather had to be pushed due to grounding issues with the fiberglass body. Luckily, Chevrolet was able to get beyond their initial troubles, and now we have over six and a half decades of Corvette. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that I think they're all beautiful, but when Chevy gets it right, they get it real right. This 59 Corvette is a prime example. The owner, Eddie, performed a top-to-bottom restoration to create his ultimate driving car. He spared it no expense and made sure that by the end of it, it would be something he can drive as often as possible. Having worked in an auto body shop most of his life, he excelled at painting, and you can consider this his showcase to his craft. When I mentioned that he must be upset about the winter coming, he said, why? It's got heat. I think that quickly sums up what type of car guy Eddie is, and his excitement about his sweet ride doesn't end with him in the driver's seat. He was eager to show this off to me and let me know what his excitement was all about. Step Sorry. on the gas. Step on the gas? Yeah. No fuel injection. Okay. <laughs> Emergency brake on the left. This Twist guy right it here. To the left. Twist it to the left. Oh, nice. Okay. And then, and then yeah. pinch this up. And then all the way up. Okay, yeah. So you just got to go kind of deep on the brakes, but they seem to be You'll effective. Feel it. And then, of course, no power steering. Eddie. Come on, this is a pleasure to drive. Isn't Eddie. It? I know. Eddie. I know. Come on, man. I'm in love immediately. This clutch and this stick. Yeah, it's amazing. Fantastic. The feeling, it's responsive too. I kind of thought I'd be starving for power to be honest with you. Oh, no, not at all. No, not at all. When that you is... take old parts apart, you align them, you clean them, clean the rust off, you lube them properly, you adjust them properly. Brand new. It makes everything work better. How much do we complement the, the power that's going on here to what you have done to it versus what was stock? Because uh, you had this car when it was original. Just a couple of performance upgrades. An updated manifold and carburetor, updated exhaust system, no generator, got an alternator, no dual point distributor, got electronic ignition. As far as the engine work and everything, you did it yourself with a friend, you were saying? Me, or? me and a friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. We had the motor on an engine stand running for five days. My friend was in no rush, great mechanic, play it, tweak it. And that's the kind of mechanic you want when yeah. it comes to a car like this. Small block Chevrolets, which this is to any trade, it's probably the best motor GM ever built. It was a workhorse, it was a, a bulletproof motor. So just refining it, giving it a little bit more air, giving it a little bit more carburation and cam. This car's got more than enough power yeah. for me. Yeah, this is so much more welcoming. You know, you think of a 50s car and that it wouldn't You don't be, expect this. You, I don't expect this. No, I know you expected I rough expected un, un, inconsistency, crew. uncertain, yes. Yeah, crew. Yes, aggressive. Unmanageable. Yes, yes. and that's not it's at all what that. I'm getting. And this is- That's uh, why the guy at the Chevrolet says to me, oh, you know, he says, I'll give you a new Corvette and a difference in a hundred grand. He says, the new Corvette rides nice. I said, my old Corvette rides nice. They don't expect this. My favorite thing right now is I'm not chasing corrections on the wheel to keep this thing in a straight line. And when I just made that slight turn back there, I turned the wheel as I expected. And I didn't have to yeah. play with it or yeah. figure it well, out. 
So this is kind of like an immediate driver's car that you can get in it and enjoy the this drive. This drives better than it did when it's 59. Hey, you're retired, so this is primarily what you do now. Drive my car. Is just drive it all day it. long. That's it. Should I keep going straight or? Wherever you want. All right, I'll just go for a little cruise. Me and Eddie just cruising on the road. Anybody who can drive stick can drive this car. Oh yeah. It's not like I had a, yeah. at least some experience in older cars and such. That experience is, is irrelevant right now. The only thing you probably want to be aware of is the braking, and that's about it. The drum brakes are not a showstopper. If it ever comes down to me where I feel these brakes aren't working for me, and I put myself in that position a couple of times, yeah. front brake disc conversion for this car is about $700. Boom. If I needed them, they would have already been on. So you also widened the tires this this Oh, yeah. Way. Like don't, I said. Don't, okay. Please don't. The original, Thank the, you. The original Corvette, 59 Corvette with four inch rims with a five inch tire. This car has 10 inch rims with 12 inch radius. That's more than 200% rubber on the road. It's like putting eight tires on. That's why the car rides the way it <laughs> rides. Plus their radials. They would never had radials. Thank you, sir. Something like this, I figured a turn like this would kind of be terrifying. But in this case, not I mean, at all. Not at all. I'm not worried in the least. I wanted to tighten up the back a little bit. And I felt this looseness. So I bought these rear coil overs. They were $68 for the pair. The guy says to me, Eddie, you're going to put those cars. It's going to lift the back of the car. It's Mike, put them in the car. If it lifts the back of the car, take them out. We'll throw them in the garbage. And I'll put the other ones back in. It's $68. Right? It worked fine. Yeah, when you're working with a car like this, kind of a priceless car in a sense, 68 bucks, give it a shot. It's 68 dollars. Yeah. And okay. you're, you're making it a driving machine. The nose is a bit longer than I'm anticipating. Well, that's because you got the AC on. And hey, <laughs> I didn't realize that flipped that panel up. That actually increased the visibility pretty well. Yeah. I'm shocked. That noise is fantastic. I normally don't really love convertibles. And this is, this is great right now. And the etching of blue that's sticking out everywhere. The originality mixed with your own take on it. That's it. Is the that's best. why I brought the color in here. That's why I did that. This steering wheel is gigantic. I love the 50s. <laughs> Everybody told me to get rid of the wheel. Why? I said, are you out of your mind? Why would you do that? 50% of the interior of this car is the wheel. Yeah, yeah when you're looking at it from and the outside. And when I was especially. testing colors, I was using this and the wheel. And the guy said to me, you painted that beautiful red wheel? <laughs> I says, yeah, why? What are you crazy? You know what that wheel's worth? You could buy a replicate wheel for $3.99, okay, in any color you want. So what is the originality of a wheel? There's nothing that says this is original, right? So I painted the red wheel this color. When you know paint, I got paint to stick to, look, vinyl, fiberglass, metal, and rubber. And you were talking about how you did color matching to this as far as the white on the outside yeah. with the white wall tires. Well, this and is vinyl. This is dyed. This is painted. This is dyed. Wow. You know? Okay. I have people tell me I was out of my mind changing the color on this car. It's my car. Yeah, but you know what it's worth? All your life, I said to my friend, all you were concerned about was the bottom line, the money. Yeah. You never bought anything that you thought you might lose a hundred dollars on, yeah. okay? That's why you don't have a car today. See, all that 100% correct original, they're only original once. If it's totally original and the car was painted once, it's not original no more. Yeah. So what's the difference of 99% original or 50% original? I put a little bit over 50,000 in it of my money, out of my pocket in it, okay? What's the car worth? It's worth whatever someone wanted to pay for it. Yeah, and it's funny because it's like, could be a hundred, could be a million, don't care, not selling it. Exactly. You know, I say this in a lot of the videos I do, but nothing has the feel like these do. This is driving a car like, like nothing else. There's nothing like getting in a car with a four speed and hear those rattles <laughs> and smell that gas and be able to shift the car. There's nothing like it. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people won't get to experience it either. Some cars that were drive by wire, that was like the biggest gap between you and the drive experience, but now it's everything. You remember the drag history of drag racing at all? Entertain me, go okay. ahead. Don Garland's was one of the best. 
He was one of the innovators of everything. The first 100 mile an hour, 200 mile an hour, 300 mile an hour. The first guy to put the rear engine in because he blew half of his foot off when the clutch exploded. Ooh. And he, he set every record there was. And they said, why'd you stop? He says, once computers came into the game, I don't want to race no more. And that was the same thing that happened in F1 with Ayrton Senna. He goes, it's not about skill anymore. It's about who can build the most computerized car that makes it happen. Right. And that's sad. That's when he stopped. Because you start losing it. That's when he stopped. This is what I wanted. Yeah. Solid axle. I want to smell it. I want to feel it. I want to hear it. But for what this is, as far as how you drive it, because you can find cars that you would love, but you'll never get it on the road. You'll never see it out. I built a driver that turned into a show car. Yeah. Half <laughs> these people that have these cars, I can't believe that I drive this car. I mean, every I, single yeah, time I've yeah, seen but, you, you have been in this yeah, car. Yeah, but people, you saw it to believe it. When you first saw it, you said, oh, I'm, I'm amazed this guy has this car. I, what I said is I said, this guy's insane. Yeah. He's parking between two other cars. Your hard work paid off very well. It wasn't hard work, though. It was very pleasurable. Never he, had a f***ing uh, I'm out of my mind doing this moment. When I wanted to do more, I did more. That's it. And Eddie did everything he could to make this a driving machine, even painting the underside with the same paint used on the exterior. I like the way he thinks. He's made every part of the process an enjoyable moment, from building it to driving it. He was actually as excited for me to drive it as I was, which was confusing at first, but Eddie's the kind of guy that wants everybody to enjoy what he's put together, whether you're the driver, passenger, or just passing by it. Eddie did mention that he's more than willing to offer this up as a stage prop or for advertisement since it works great as a period piece. Leave a comment below if you're interested, and I'll contact him. Since I started putting content together for this channel, I've met some of the most down-to-earth, funny, and interesting people that share the same love for cars as I do, and Eddie is no exception. The adventure isn't stopping here, so if you like what you saw, like and subscribe. If you dislike it, let me know why in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it, and as per usual, thank you for watching. Notice the cameras? I see it. Where are I? <laughs> where, hey. I'm making them famous. Hey. <laughs> I offered you to drive it many times. Yeah. So right now we're live on YouTube. <laughs>